In this video, we're now ready to prove the von Neumann Morgenstern expected utility theorem. Let's just remember what this says. It says the following statements are equivalent. It's an if and only if statement. Statement one holds uh, that preferences over lotteries satisfy axioms one through six completeness, transitivity, mixture monotonicity, reduction, um, substitution, and continuity. So if any of these axioms feel unfamiliar now, please go over the previous video where they were explained and you were asked to show that expected utility preferences must satisfy each of these axioms. So that, that's the first statement, preferences satisfy one through six, this is true if and only if uh, the second statement is true, preferences over lotteries can be represented by expected utility. So the fact that statement two, expected utility represents preferences, uh, the fact that that implies statement one, I left as an exercise to be discussed on the Piazza Forum for this course. In this video, we're going to prove the more difficult statement that if statement one is true, if we have a preference relation over lotteries that satisfies axioms one through six, then we can construct an expected utility representation of those preferences over lotteries. So let's get started with this now. So the first thing we're going to do is label um, x overlined and x underlined and denote these as the best and worst outcomes. It can be shown that such outcomes exist. Now, if we take any outcome xi, then we know that the best outcome is preferred, best being the most preferred. So the best outcome is preferred to xi and xi is preferred to the worst outcome underlined x, okay? Now the continuity axiom says whenever we have an outcome such as xi, which in terms of preferences is sandwiched between either two lotteries or two outcomes, then there always exists some number which we'll call alpha i that makes the decision maker indifferent between the outcome xi and the lottery the simple lottery where probability alpha i is assigned to the best outcome and probability 1 minus alpha i is assigned to the worst outcome. The existence of this number alpha i is crucially important for us because we're going to use it as follows. We are going to define the, a utility function now for outcomes, so a utility function where we can plug in x1, x2, all the way up to xk, and the number that pops out when we plug in outcome xi will be the alpha i in this diagram, the alpha i that makes the decision maker indifferent between a best worst lottery with alpha i assigned to the probability of the best outcome. Now that we've very quickly defined a function, which will be the von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, the rest of the job is just to show that when we define a utility function in this way, then the preferences over lotteries can be represented by an expected utility form using this particular von Neumann Morgenstern utility function. So there's quite a bit to do to get there. Let's get started with this. For our first step here, we're going to show by using the axioms that we assume are true, that if we take any lottery P, then we can construct a lottery uh, which will denote P tilde, or P with a curly line on top of it, P tilde, which is where P tilde is simply a binary lottery of best or worst with some probability and our decision maker is indifferent between P and P tilde. So let's show how we do this now. So this is the construction of P tilde. 
To make the proof clear in the video, I'm going to assume that P just takes, uh, just has two possible outcomes and is a simple lottery. Okay, now this will work if P is a compound lottery or it will work if P has however many outcomes you like. So this is just uh, to simply show you how the proof works. So let's take P, uh, I've written here P is indifferent between uh, this lottery where with some probability I get, uh, some probability P X1, I get prize X1, and with some probability P X2, I get prize X2. Now, in fact, this is equal to P, but indifference uh, is necessarily follows from that statement. So I've labeled the outcome X1 here. I've colored it in blue. Now, I know that X1, if I do the trick above, there is a best worst lottery um, where uh, the decision maker will be indifferent between X1 and that best worst lottery when the probability assigned to the best outcome is the number alpha one, which is the what we called the utility of x1. So by the substitution axiom, I can take this outcome x1 and replace it in this way by this binary best worst lottery where the probability assigned to the best outcome is u of x1. Using the substitution axiom again, I can do the same with outcome x2. So without disturbing this indifference, the uh, decision maker will still be indifferent if I replace x2 by a simple binary lottery where you get the best outcome with probability u of x2, that was our alpha 2, or the worst outcome with probability 1 minus u of x2, okay? So I've taken a simple lottery P, which only had two possible outcomes, x1 and x2, and constructed this compound lottery where the only possible final outcomes are the best outcome, x overlined, or the worst outcome, x underlined. Since there are only two possible outcomes in this lottery, let's use the reduction axiom to find a lottery which is equivalent to this compound lottery, but is a simple lottery with some probability assigned to uh, the best outcome overlined x and some probability assigned to the worst outcome underlined x. So if I look at the probability in the compound lottery of receiving the best outcome, this happens if I go to the yellow chance node, if I go up with some probability px1 and then go up again with probability ux1 or it happens where I go down at the first yellow chance node with probability px2 and then at the orange chance node I go up uh, which is probability ux2. Okay, so the overall probability of receiving the best outcome in this compound lottery is px1 multiplied by ux1 plus px2 multiplied by ux2, okay? Uh, and for the reduced lottery, I simply take that number and make that the probability of the best outcome. So we're going to call this lottery p tilde, okay? So for any lottery, however many outcomes it has, whether it's a simple lottery or a compound lottery, I can always do this substitution as many times as I need to, followed by a final reduction of compound lotteries to boil it down to this simple um, best or worst lottery where the probability um, of uh, the best outcome overlined x is defined as above. So now let's show that using expected utility with the von Neumann Morgenstern utility function that we've defined using that probability of best worst idea uh, really represents preferences. So let's take any two lotteries, P and Q, um, and suppose that P is preferred to Q. 
Now I say any two lotteries, for the video, I'm going to assume that each of these only has two possible outcomes. So P is some lottery with probability of X1 or X2, and Q is a lottery with some probability X3 and X4. Okay, so this is just for presentation. Um, this is not required. They could have as many outcomes as you like. If we do the same construction that we did before for our P tilde, so we replace, we know that for given a lottery P, we can find a binary best worst lottery that we labeled P tilde. And we did the same for Q. We find a Q tilde, which is indifferent to Q, but is a binary lottery of best and worst. Then we would get these two green lotteries here. So P tilde assigns P X1 times U X1 plus P X2 times U X2 to the probability of the best outcome. The lottery on the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, uh, Q tilde assigns probability Q of X3, U of X3 plus Q of X4 times U of X4 to the probability of the best outcome. This Q tilde is constructed in exactly the same way that we constructed P tilde. Okay, so so far we've used the continuity axiom to show the existence of our alpha, which became our utility number. We've used the substitution axiom several times and the reduction axiom as well um, when constructing these P tildes from P and Q tilde from Q. So the axiom that we haven't used yet is the, um, is the, the mixture monotonicity axiom. And this is where we can now say, well, if I look at these simple lotteries, I know that X overlined is the better outcome. So all that matters when I compare these two binary lotteries is that the, uh, the number assigned to the probability of the best outcome is larger, okay? So mixture monotonicity says P is preferred to Q if and only if P tilde is preferred to Q tilde. By mixture monotonicity, this is true if and only if the probability P tilde assigns to the best outcome is larger than the probability assigned to the best outcome under Q tilde, which is the same as saying that the expected utility of P is greater than or equal to the expected utility of Q. So there it is. That completes the proof that if we construct a von neumann morgenstern uh, utility function in the way that we've described, taking the probability number that makes our decision maker indifferent between a simple gamble between best and worst, with the probability assigned to the best being that utility number, then necessarily preferences over lotteries are represented by expected utility using that utility function. In the lecture notes, I've written out exactly the same idea, but just presented it mathematically. Um, so I haven't limited myself to just using lotteries with two outcomes. We've worked with K different outcomes, but the ideas are exactly the same. So it's worth going through the, the video before doing the reading in this case to get the general idea of how the proof works. That will make reading the more general proof much easier. So that concludes, for now, our study of choice under risk. Today we've covered some basic utility theory, the ex expected utility model, and the axiomatic foundation of the expected utility model, the von neumann morgenstern expected utility theorem. So now we know a lot about choice under risk in microeconomics. In the next lecture, we will be looking at Akerlof's famous paper on the market for lemons. While the importance of the market for lemons paper wasn't recognized immediately, indeed, the idea is so simple, it almost seems obvious. It later became perhaps the most influential paper on information in economics and Akerlof was awarded the Nobel Prize for this contribution. So, 
very interesting lecture next time. I can't wait. But in the meantime, take care.